up VC uh, Bobby B here um, I was working today uh, I just got home from work uh, it's the middle of the day we started working but it is the 500th snowstorm of the year here in Toronto and I think that's some kind of record 500 snowstorms of 2019 I mean what we're a month in that's you know at least four snowstorms a day Anyways, so I thought, well, I'll take the opportunity, who knows how often I'll get this opportunity, to do a good old-fashioned spins and finds and whatever, because I haven't done one of those for, uh, for a long time, and uh, I picked up so many records last year, I just thought, hey, let's take a moment to, to do that. The wind is rattling out there, I do have some music playing, I'll get to you in a second, or I'll let you know in a second what that is, but let that sink in for a bit. I don't even know if you can hear it. I assume you can, because it's kind of loud here. And my stereo is awesome. Anyways. But yeah, let's get to some spins and finds and whatever. I've got a whole pile of stuff here. I want to sort of talk about them all. So I'll, uh, I'll just kind of be brief. There'll be a mix of new stuff and old stuff. And, but it's primarily all stuff that I picked up uh, throughout the course of last year. And it's just kind of a random bunch of picks. Just a bunch of my favorites and what we're listening to here was my favorite album of 2018 and it was this this sandro perry the album's called in another life and uh it's it's mellow i i you know i'll admit the first couple times i listened to it i fell asleep <laughs> and that was okay because i hadn't been sleeping well and i needed a good sleep so uh so that was all right but this um sorry i gotta stop touching that a d d but anyways, yeah, he's a local genius. I think I've talked about him before. Every time he releases an album, it's like nothing you've ever heard before. And this one is no exception. I'll tell you the, on the little, whoa, sticker here. Sandro Perry, In Another Life. It says um, his first new solo album since the acclaimed Impossible Spaces. Uh, it quotes Pitchfork, who says that Perry provides all the queasy listening sophistication of a more inebriated C and cake or a less spastic dirty projectors and then Boomcat says one of the most singular producers in contemporary music Sandro Perry's been around he's a session musician that's worked with a lot of different artists he is a producer he uh, dabbles in electronic music he also dabbles in um, uh, folk and acoustic stuff uh, but um, you know his solo albums are always very very unique and this album just blew my mind it's borderline hip hypnotic if i'm allowed to say that uh it's only got two songs in another life and everybody's paris in another life's 25 minutes long that's what we're listening to right now everybody's paris it's 20 minutes long but it's divided into three parts he sings part one uh part two is sung by Andre Etier, who's another local hero, uh, another local genius, I would say. And then part three is sung by Dan Bahar, who uh, is the vocalist for Destroyer, who you may be familiar with. Anyways, if you haven't heard this record, I highly recommend it. I haven't met a person yet who doesn't like it. Um, but you do have to be in the mindset for it because it is quite mellow. Uh, I made myself some tea. Let me just go and grab it here. Hey guys, sorry about that. It's just that kind of a day where you need some tea. Um, a few more pickups. This isn't a new one, and I've, I've talked about this before. Eric's Trip. This is their debut album, Love Tara, Eric's Trip. Uh, if you don't know about them, you, uh, watch my Top 100 video, numbers 11 through 20. This album makes an appearance because I think it's one of the greatest Canadian albums of all time. But the reason I'm showing this is because Eric's Trip released 
only three albums and that one was reissued a few years ago last year they reissued the other two and so now I've got them all on vinyl which is wonderful so their second album is entitled forever again this is it here lo-fi um, you know has some grunge elements but you don't have to like grunge to, to like this because it's not it's not grunge um, but yeah it's uh, it's an amazing album from the amazing band from the East Coast one of Canada's best kept secrets as you can see this album is on I don't know purple purple vinyl purple whatever psychedelic vinyl I don't know what you would call that that's their second album I actually heard this album before I heard uh, the other one this was the first album I ever heard by them and then their third album is entitled purple blue and this is this is it here the artwork's beautiful as you probably notice and it is also on some kind of colored vinyl I guess I guess it's purple blue vinyl which would make sense so that's that's that so I was very happy to obtain those records last year just one of the greatest Rick White is very prolific Julie Duaron has also done a lot of kind of interesting stuff but that's that is that there some more new music too that I uh, highly recommend I went I went to a record number of shows last year I went to see uh, well some of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life I saw Dweezil Zappa last year I saw Radiohead I saw Brian Wilson which I talked about before those are three concerts that rank amongst the best shows I've ever seen and uh, I, I went to so many other great shows I saw Brian Jones Town Massacre last year um, here's some others that I saw I saw this girl Hatchie and here I'll put put on a bit of her in the background here so you can hear what she's all about um, She's uh, from Australia, and don't let the cover of this album fool you. As you can see, when I went to see her in concert, she signed my record, which is pretty cool. The cover of this album makes it look like she's, uh, you know, kind of a teeny bopper type uh, pop music, Taylor Swift type, but no, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, if you can hear it, I'll let you hear a bit. It's got a bit of a shoegaze vibe to it. Um, Cocteau Twins is the obvious comparison. And in fact, um, what's her name from the Cocteau Twins? I want to say, oh, jeepers, I can't remember. Oh, Robin Guthrie from the Cocteau Twins actually heard one of her songs and remixed it because uh, she was so impressed with her work. This album we're talking about the album well it's an EP actually it's only five songs so it's quite short I mean of course it's on pink vinyl what else do you expect and it's only one side and then the other side has this etching that you likely won't be able to see oh yeah there you go it's a heart anyways um, this is the album I've listened to or the EP the music I've listened to the most last year I just couldn't get enough of it um, but yeah, you should check out Hachi. Really, really good. Um, another artist. In fact, the day before I saw the day before I saw Hachi in concert, I saw another band from um, Australia. They're called the Rolling Blackout CF. They're, there's quite a bit of Rolling Blackouts. Coastal Fever is actually what they're called, and they uh, there's a lot of buzz behind them right now. They put on uh, a really fun show. Here's a... They signed my record as well. 
Jangle Pop. I didn't plan that. Midnight Blue. Right there. Um, the record's really good, but their live show is even better. The live show was, was therapeutic, man. It was unbelievable to, to see live. I don't know. Jangle pop, rock and roll. Rolling Blackout, CF. The album's called Hope Downs. Really good stuff. I don't know what what the law is on playing music on my videos, so this, you know, I hope this doesn't get taken down or anything. Here's some other stuff I listen. Uh, uh, another band I saw. I see them every year. They come to town every year. It's Acid Mother's Temple. This is uh, those who came never before. Acid Mother's Temple and the Melting Paraiso UFO. Um, again, signed by I think three of the four guys. I don't know. Is this on color? Yeah, boy, a lot of colored vinyl, eh? Look at this. Psych rock, trippy, trippy psych rock kind of stuff. Um, yeah, if you don't know who they are, whatever. Anybody who'd like them knows who they are. They're they're pretty well known. So that's that. I also got this. Um, I went to see them live. I see them live every year. Uh, here's something older that I picked up. Uh, an original UK pressing of the Faust tapes. Faust? Faust? Tapes? I don't know. That's uh, gonna, gonna freak out your vertical hold. Um, really, really clean, clean, beautiful vinyl. This was, uh, this was a record that Faust released. It was, it was kind of I th priced to... I think, I think, if I remember right, the record company wanted them to release some stuff, so, uh, so they released this kind of a value price, and it was basically just a lot of stuff that, uh, a lot of stuff that didn't make final, uh, didn't make it onto other albums, kind of bits and pieces, stuff that was half finished and whatever, but, uh, man, I love, I love Faust, and this was Faust, Faust, I don't even know how you say it, pronounce it. But that was that was really really good. Um, well, yeah, here's something else I picked up from last year. Another favorite from. Uh, whoops, let me just do this here. Tess Parks and Anton Newcomb. Anton Newcomb is from the band The Brian Jonestown Massacre, of course. I'm sure you're familiar with that, and. Uh, Tess Parks is a girl from Toronto that was a fan of the Brian Jonestown Massacre who went on to uh, who caught the attention of Anton and they released one album together a few years ago and this is their second album, it's self-titled. Here's a bit of a what it sounds like. Of that you get the gist of that kind of droney psych psychedelic rock Brian Jonestown Massacre released a great album last year I didn't I don't have it on vinyl yet but called uh, something else uh, uh, it was great I think I liked this album a little bit better though but yeah she's got that smoky that smoky voice that just uh, It's hard to deny. Um, here's another kind of cool one. I promise I'll get to some more older stuff too, but this is this is some more kind of nouveau psych rock, and it's a uh, bit of a psych supergroup of sorts. It's a group called Mine M I E N. Um, Um, 
I saw these guys as well. They're on the Rocket Recordings label, which is a really good psych label if you're unfamiliar with it and you're looking for kind of new sort of droney psych rock type stuff. Um, yeah, the inner sleeve. Oh yeah, I haven't been showing you a lot of these inner sleeves. The Sandro Perry one comes with a little poster and stuff too. But anyways, whatever, I get sidetracked. I'm trying to whip through these kind of fast. But um, yeah, as I was saying, mine is a bit of a uh, super group of sorts. I don't know if you can see that. Whoa. So it features uh, Alex Moss from the Black Angels, Tom First from the Horrors, John Mark Lapham from the Earlies and Rishi Durr from Elephant Stone um, on sitar. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, if you're a psych head, you're going to dig that. Um, Kikagaku Moyo is another band that I've, I've mentioned before. I showed this record before, this uh, Forest of Lost Children, which came out a few years ago um, on Bone and Black Swirl vinyl. I showed you that. Uh, but I, w I went to see them this year as well. They killed it and uh, I picked up a couple of their albums there. I picked up their first album Which is this guy here. It's a self-titled Kikagaku Moyo And I'm gonna sound like the vinyl douche here and say, you know, on rare black vinyl uh, I don't know it comes with sort of a I don't know, it's like an OB strip, but not. It just kind of fits over the side like that. So I got that one, and so that was their first, I think it's their first album, self-titled. Uh, Japanese psych rock. And then I picked up also their most recent album. I'm not gonna take it out of the package, but Masana Temples. Um, crazy artwork, as you can see. Uh, it's also on black, black vinyl. Um, an amazing album, still psych, but I find it's a little bit proggier than uh, their other work, I find anyways. And oddly, uh, slightly more accessible too. Um, another psych band that's kind of on everybody's radar is King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And this was the album, Polygon of Wonderland. Um, just, just Google it, you'll find out information, but this is the one that they gave away free uh, online and told everybody to just do what you want with it. Um, if you want to make a cassette, if you want to make vinyl, if you want to make CDs, if you want to download anything you want, it's here. And so there were so many different options as to how to order this one. I did this through a, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, like a crowdfunding type thing. So it's, it's not the coolest the vinyl's cool, but there's cooler variations out there. So many, so many different variations. Um, this one's on, you know, kind of simple, kind of bluish. I don't know what color you'd call that. Teal. Clear teal vinyl, but it also comes with this book, which is kind of neat. Um, downside, uh, the book has, you know, artwork and, and lyrics. Um, downside is the lyrics are written in Spanish, I think. Yeah, so I can't read them. But on the upside, everybody who contributed to the thing gets a mention. And so my name is in that list of names there, which is kind of cool. So it's kind of cool to own a, uh, a record by uh, King Giz, Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. With, uh, with my name in the liner notes. Kind of cool. Canadian supergroup Sloan released the new album last year, and I've already seen a couple people in the vinyl community uh, talk about it. I'm going to do the same. It's this album here. Uh, 12th, their 12th album. Uh, this copy I have is on orange vinyl and it's an awesome power pop album I think it's their best album in I th since 2006 I think it's their best album since never hear the end of it so uh, but you know 
I've talked about Sloan enough, so if you don't know who they are, check them out. They also reissued uh, an, what was an, up till now an online only EP entitled Hit and Run. So they reissued uh, that, or actually issued it on vinyl for the first time. Can't remember, is this a colored? Yeah, it is. Of course it is. It's, uh, it was all yellow-ish. I find uh, Sloan's records, although great, the, uh, oh, it comes with this little insert with a cool picture of the band, lyrics on the other side, solid bunch of uh, songs. I find their, I don't know, they their albums have these really, really tight covers, and most of them I can't get the record back inside, especially if there's a... Uh, an inner sleeve. I find it really challenging. I don't like that. Anyways, that's one thing they could do better off with their reissues. But other than that, I mean, owning Sloan on vinyl, to get the originals of most of these albums, forget about it. Not gonna happen, my friend. Um, another album I really liked from uh, last year is this girl Julia Holter. I, I think this is like her fourth or fifth album maybe. Um, and she's very eccentric for sure. But her, uh, but this album is even more eccentric than she usually is. It's quite, quite a challenging listen. Won't be for everybody. Um, it's entitled Aviary. This is, one of the more accessible songs on the album, if you want to call it that. But I really loved this album. This is my second favorite album of the year. Um, you can see... It's very, really quite avant-garde. Nice glossy cover. Comes with this uh, book as well, which is great high quality kind of glossy book and a uh, download card I know some who even liked her albums in the past found this one a bit challenging um, yep black vinyl found this one a little more challenging I really liked it I think it's her best album to date. Uh, here's an artist you don't need to, I don't need to give you much background on. A lot of people know him, a lot of people like him, but I'll give you my opinion on, on this album because I think it's different than some. It's Jack White, it's his third album, uh, Boarding House Reach. Um, Jack White, I, I love Jack White, uh, I love, but like many people, I love Jack White, but I think my opinions are different than many people when it comes to his output. Uh, the White Stripes, of course I love the White Stripes, I don't think they ever got better than their first album, personally. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that I was introduced to them, that I knew of them before everybody else did. I was introduced to them uh, by means of white blood cells like most people, but then I backtracked from there and I liked both of the albums before, Distill and their uh, self-titled first album. I liked them both better than White Blood Cells. I found every album that they released, while all great, had uh, diminishing returns until their last album, Icky Thump, which I think was their second best album. I thought it was really original. Uh, his other work with the Rack Contours, eh. Uh, Dead Weather, meh, and then he had his solo career, uh, and the other two albums prior to this I thought were pretty good, but had some filler, had some great songs, had some filler, uh, but then this album here, which was just a little too weird for a lot of people, I think is the best album he's released, <laughs> to date, uh, a certainly solo album, it's, it's the album I've been waiting for him to do, it is ex a, experimental, it is quite bizarre, uh, there are some songs on here that uh, sound quite a bit different than what he's uh, done otherwise, but it's just, uh, if you like a challenging listen, 
then uh, I would recommend that album. It was one of my favorites of the year also. And uh, I, I thought it was better than, than a lot of people did. Um, how are we doing here? 25 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, Kurt Vile, Bottle It In. This is another one of the great albums of last year. Uh, kind of lo-fi, folk rock. Um, Kurt Vile, somebody I've liked for a long time. But again, he uh, before this album... Uh, he never had an album that uh, where every song was great from start to finish. Uh, this one, I think every song is great from start to finish. It's uh, outstanding. Uh, there's a few longer pieces on this, and those work really well. Bass Ackwards might be the best song he's ever done. I'm going to see him this Saturday. It's going to be great. The Sadies are opening for him. If you don't know who the Sadies are, look them up. Their live show is one of the best you'll ever see. Kurt Vile, Bottle It In. Here's some others I got. I got Brian Eno's Another Green World, um, an early uh, US pressing. Not an original, but uh, it sounds quite good. I quite enjoy it. My Brian Eno collection is lacking because of how expensive his albums are, so I was really happy to get this. Um, here's some more classic psych. Love Sculpture, Forms and Feelings. This features Dave Edmonds on uh, vocals. This is a UK press. On Parlophone. Uh, it wasn't very expensive. Got that cool Parlophone label. Really, really good album. Uh, the Saber Dance. He does a version of, uh, of um, the Saber Dance on here that is kind of a prototype for a lot of speed metal. I think the guitar is crazy on it. Um, some weird jazz music, Rassan Roland, Roland Kirk, I got a couple of his albums, I got this Natural Black Inventions Root Strata on, uh, it's a promo copy, Canadian promo copy, um, avant-garde jazz, weird stuff, got this, uh, Prepare Thyself to Deal with a Miracle, another kind of older copy. Um, okay, this is getting long, isn't it? 27 minutes, my word. Grateful Dead, uh, album's called Grateful Dead. It's a live album. Don't know when it was recorded. Here's some classic Django Pop. Pylon, Chomp, College Rock. Really good stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to... Everything But The Girl. Gold Stamp Promo. Kind of jazzy, English, 80s. Depeche Mode's best album, Violator. Nice early UK pressing. Uh, or Canadian pressing, sorry. UK, I wish. Early uh, Canadian pressing of Violator. I think it's their best album. Dead Can Dance. This is a UK pressing of their third album. I think it's called... What is it called? Within the Realm of a Dying Sun. Kind of minimal wave, gothy type stuff. Uh, okay, here, I'm going to pass on. Okay, I'm going to show just three more here. Or two, yeah, three more. Um, the hardcore punk rock scene in Toronto was, uh, in the 80s, was not heavily documented. The 70s, sure. 90s, yeah. But uh, the 80s was never highly documented. And there was a pretty big hardcore punk scene. So the, the, the folks at Ugly Pop Records released this, which is a 80s Toronto Hardcore Compilation EP. Um, just a collection of, of songs that were basically kind of released on cassette at the time and not, uh, not really readily available. But it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful document of uh, hardcore punk rock at the time. And it comes with this huge book that interviews many of the individuals who were part of the scene at that time. Great pictures. This is a full book. Really good. It also comes with uh, postcards and show posters. Or, or a kind of a, a little, I don't know, a poster of show posters from the time. Yeah, really kind of neat neat document of the time and that's kind of nice and cheap 
And for the Miles Davis fans out there, I picked up this Japanese pressing of the uh, Field de Kilimanjaro record. This is, I love this era of Miles, kind of his fusion-y era. Um, the record, I mean, come on, Japanese pressing. Of course, it sounds amazing. Um, Japanese pressings actually can be a bit, it was a little bit noisier than I uh, thought it would be, but still kind of awesome to have it. And, uh, and along with that too, I got this, uh, I got a nice deal on this 40th anniversary Bitches Brew box set. Um, the guy at the record store gave me a really good deal on this because I was buying some other stuff too. So I'll just give you a quick run through of what this is and what it includes. So first of all, nice sturdy box. Secondly, it comes with uh, a wonderful sounding reissue of of the album. Uh, it comes with this sort of, comes with a poster. Yeah, it comes with a fold out poster. I'm not gonna fold out the whole thing, but kind of a cool poster. A, uh, some more pictures, kind of a reprint of a Rolling Stone article that he was in some facsimiles of some letters that he did you know more of this stuff this is a photo it comes with this which is uh cds three cds and one dvd um well it has okay the the album on cd plus some alternate takes it's got a live performance on CD from 1970 and then it's got a DVD of a live show in Copenhagen in 1969 so that's kind of awesome and then there's also this massive book that it also comes with so just an, just an awesome collection of stuff so anyways that's an overload for you there guys holy macro 30 minutes I don't do 30 minute videos and I haven't really said anything worthwhile have I if you watched this, you're a champ. Thank you for uh, joining me. That's it for now. Spins and finds and whatever. My name is Bobby B. I am Liner Notes on YouTube and The Vinyl Vagabond on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. Stay warm, guys. Okay? Ciao. Bye.